Growing up, I was a big fan of all the Rodgers and Hammerstein music. And I watch him on VHS and watch everyone be big and happy and optimistic. And I'm like, well, people aren't like this anymore, except for Mormons. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. I'm Adam Green, Vogue's theater critic. And I'm talking today with Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the famously bad boy creators of South Park, whose new musical, The Book of Mormon, just opened across the street at the Eugene O'Neill Theater. As you can imagine, this isn't a show for your church-going grandma who thinks Dad Burnett is a terrible curse. It's seriously filthy and deeply blasphemous, but it's also a sweet, really kind of old-fashioned musical, and for my money, the funniest one ever. Those LDS commercials. Remember they yes, used to have so those? it's so hard to live with a lie. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, it was like they ran it on national TV like in the so 80s, dark right? inside. feel like <laughs> I want to really cry. I still remember it. They <laughs> were yeah. little musical numbers. Little, and, they, yeah. and at the end, it said, brought to you by the Church of Latter-day Church of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ of Latter-day Latter Saints. Saints. It would say that. There's just something about the aesthetic that the church puts forward that makes you think that they're just always about to break out in the song. It's totally different sitting in the back of the house with a thousand people either laughing or not laughing at something, which happens too from time to time. There is something uniquely nerve-wracking about being in the same room with the live performers doing the material as compared to like Wednesday night on South Park. But really, South Park's playing to two or three million people, but it's easier to just forget about it or not stress out about it. It's a lot more terrifying and gratifying. Have you heard from any Mormons have actually seen the show? There seem to be Mormons almost every night. We can And we can kind of hear the little pockets of Mormons in the crowd because there's certain things in the show that you would have to either be a very well-studied non-Mormon or an ex-Mormon or something because there's certain things in the show that, that get like this little applause from like three or four people. You're like, okay, there's the Mormons. When we started writing this, we started with the songs. As you're sitting there and you're talking about the whole idea, you know, you're sitting there going, okay, well, the two missionaries, they could do this, and then it's like, oh, remember that song from Music Man? We got trouble, you know, it's like, it could be that kind of thing, because he's trying to pitch what the Mormon religion is. So, you know, we always had a, a reference, and Kanuma and Katata is probably the most recent thing we used. Everything else was really a more classic musical. We were also very careful to not just parody that song, because we wanted to create our own songs and make them very original. Would you sing a verse of I Believe? No. You wouldn't? Okay. <laughs> it always sounds a good idea, and then you're in the middle of a, a room right here singing I Believe, and you're like, oh yeah. boy. No. And then the other people on the cast and crew will see me on TV singing I Believe, and they're like, what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I do it.